and fun capital of the world, it's the Jackie Gleason Show. And away we go! Yes, and away we go with another video from Power Director Made Simple. Today's video is the last one to show the features and changes in the latest update of March 27th, 2024. So this video will be all about the new face blur. And let's see if it answers my questions given in the previous video. Does it apply to images and videos alike? Does it do multiple faces? And does it track moving faces in a video? As promised, this video will answer all of those questions. When you click on the effects menu at the top, you'll find the category of face blur all by itself. I would think that it would have been part of the body effect category, but for the time being, it remains on its own. When you click on face blur, it's easy to see that there are two choices, either a Gaussian blur or a mosaic blur, better known as a pixelated blur. On the timeline, I have an image of just one young girl. I'll make sure that the clip is selected and let's see a preview of what happens by merely clicking the Gaussian blur in the window. The preview image lasts for five seconds, but that's not much of a blur. Let's click on the face mosaic blur to see what that might look like. Once again, there is a five second preview. No, the mosaic blur does a slightly better job, but in my opinion, it's still not enough. There must be a method to increase the amount of blur. Well, there certainly is. The secret is that you have to first apply the effect to the clip. I'll start with the Gaussian blur and drop it directly onto the image. Notice the small green square in the lower left of the clip, which indicates that the effect has been applied. Now to change the effect settings, just like other applied effects, I can either click on the name of the effect in the small green icon on the clip, or just click on the effect button above the timeline. The effect settings window opens, and there's only one parameter to set, strength. The default setting seems to be about 20, so I'll move the slider to anywhere between 80 and 100, which now does a better job of disguising the face in the image. While this window is open, notice below the strength slider bar, it indicates that only one face was detected and it has a check mark on it. Remember this as we'll come back to it in a little bit later. Now let's try the mosaic blur. I'll click on the trash can icon to remove the current effect and then I'll exit the settings window. I'll then drag the mosaic effect down and drop it on the image. I'll click on the effect button to open the settings window and with the default setting apparently at around 32 I'm going to increase the strength to anywhere from 60 or above to totally disguise the face. I'll then close the settings window. Okay, that does an excellent job on the face blur on one face on one image. But let's throw multiple faces on the same image and just see what happens then. The second image on the timeline has three young children in it. I'm going to apply the Gaussian blur to the image. It seems to have applied the blur to all three faces, but once again, the, the default setting seems weak. Let's open up the effect settings window by clicking on the effect button above the timeline. I'll increase the strength to anything above 60. Notice in the preview window that all three faces were blurred. This is confirmed by the settings window, which indicates that it detected three faces, and each has a check mark on it. So far, very impressive. But what if it's only one of the faces of the three that you wanted to be blurred? Does Power Director let you pick and choose the faces? Yeah, the answer is yes. That's 
what those check marks on the detected faces means. Let's assume that it's only the tallest child on this picture that we wanted to blur the face. In the settings window, just remove the check mark from the other two faces. But wait, which face is which child? You need to temporarily turn off the blur by unchecking it on the left side, which now reveals the faces of all three. Unfortunately, the faces in the settings window are not in the same order as they are in the image, so you'll have to do your best at matching up the faces. After determining that the tallest child's face is actually the first face in the settings window, turn the effect back on and then remove the check mark from the other two. Now, so far we have determined that the blur can handle still images, multiple faces in the same image, and allows the user to be selective about which face or faces are to be blurred. But what about video? Does it work on video? Eh, let's find out. In the first video on the timeline, I have a man sitting on a sandy beach. We can try the preview as before, but the default setting once again seems to be on the weak side. Let's apply the effect and then increase the strength as before. This time, I'll drag the mosaic blur down and drop it on the video clip. There is a momentarily delay as PowerDirector analyzes the content before applying the effect. I'm going to click on the Effect button to open the Effect Settings window. This time, the strength of the mosaic blur is determined by the tile size. I'm going to move it down towards a minimum size, and you can see it barely blurs the face. If I move it up towards the maximum, the block size becomes overly large and just looks strange. I'm going to choose something in the middle, such as anything around 50 or so. Now notice once again that it says detected faces, so that might be a clue that it also works on multiple faces in a video. We'll test that out in just a moment. I'm going to close the settings window, and now let's play this video. There is some movement to the man's face, and it appears that the facial blur is indeed tracking the face. Uh, let's really confirm that with another video that really has some facial movement. Now pay attention here becomes here comes a real time saver. I'm going to right click on the video of the man on the beach and select copy keyframe attributes. I then right click on the next video that I want and I'm going to select paste keyframe attributes. A momentary pause as video director analyzes the content, probably to track the face in this video, which would be different than the previous video. When done, let's play this video. Notice that the mosaic size was properly copied over, and also notice that when the woman leaned forward, the blur stayed on her face. Yes, indeed, the face blur does track with the movement of the face. Okay, now let's throw a real monkey wrench at it. One video with multiple faces, and each face has multiple movements. I'm going to copy the keyframe attributes from the previous video and paste them into this new video. All right, we're all done. Here we go. I'm going to hit play. Ah, it did only one face. Why? Well, the attributes from the previous video were only for one face. So that's what got pasted into this video. Let's just click the effect button once again and make the changes. 
In the effects settings window, it said it detected four faces, but the effect was applied to only one. So let's put a check mark on the other three. I'm going to reposition the playhead to the start and hit play again. Well, there you have it. The face blur works on images and videos, multiple faces, and tracks each face. I am impressed. Good job, Cyberlink. I can hear everybody whispering, what? Did this guy just give a compliment to Cyberlink? So this concludes my summary of the recent updates to PowerDirector. There are actually a few more very small changes, some of which I didn't even notice until I was creating these videos for YouTube. Go ahead, start up PowerDirector 365 after downloading this latest update, and see if you can spot any of these small changes. If you spot them, leave a comment below. And once again, thanks to all of you for watching.